Hi, I'm Ellie, and this video is going to be about overcoming unconscious biases. So I'm going to do three things in the video. Firstly, talk about what unconscious bias actually is. Secondly, talk about how to recognize it. And then finally, talk about how you can combat it as an, an adjudicator. So what is unconscious bias? Bias can be both direct or indirect. Uh, and it is against a protected attribute of some sort, which is not consciously held, you might not intend to do it, but which can still impact your assessment of speaker's skill and of arguments in the debate. So that's just to say you might not be uh, minusing a point from their speaker score or making them lose the debate uh, because they're a woman or because they're a person of colour, but it might be unconsciously coming into how you judge the plausibility of their claims, uh, the overall persuasiveness of their case and so on. So some examples uh, of what unconscious bias could look like are as follows. Firstly, you might take women um, or people of colour, people from other marginalised groups less seriously. Uh, so you might, in assessing their claims, subject their points to more scrutiny than you otherwise would, or you might give them less credit for uh, an argument which you otherwise might find persuasive. Secondly, uh, bias can constitute an unconscious preference for certain styles, voices, accents, and so forth. Now, obviously, this does not um, directly necessarily discriminate against people, but it can lead to uh, indirect indirect discrimination for the reason that uh, obviously different types of styles tend to be held by particular groups of people. So for example, if you find yourself persuaded by a particularly confident and assertive manner, uh, that might often mean that you will unconsciously discount the arguments coming from women that who, you know, have been socialized potentially to be uh, less assertive and less confident. And so you should avoid doing that uh, because it is unfair. Um, and finally, uh, kind of abstracting away from what individual speakers might be doing, uh, unconscious bias can just lead you to find particular arguments about the world more persuasive because of your preconceived ideas. And ultimately, we should not be doing any of these things because the way we judge debates is based on the uh, substance of speakers' arguments and their ability to justify those arguments. And so as an adjudicator, you should try to remove your preconceptions about individuals, about arguments, about the world generally, uh, so that you can do that in the most unbiased way possible. All right, how do you recognize unconscious bias? Uh, there are sort of three steps that you're going to do uh, when you're recognizing unconscious bias within yourself. Uh, firstly, you should be honest with yourself. Obviously, like everyone is socialized in a less than ideal world, which means everyone is likely to have particular biases. Uh, it's not something you necessarily consented to or opted into, which means you shouldn't beat yourself up about having them, but you do actually have to address them. Uh, there's no use lying to yourself and saying that you have no biases, you're a perfect individual. You should be uh, you know, critiquing yourself and willing to improve. Secondly, you should reflect on what biases you may have. Um, and to do this, you're going to think critically about how you, your identity, your experiences, and so forth, might mean that you connect more with certain groups of people and certain types of arguments. And to be clear, this is not always straightforward. For example, as a woman adjudicator, you could still sometimes uh, be sexist in the way that you adjudicate. Um, but reflecting on, on what kind of biases you will have and where they have come from is an important first step. Thirdly, having done adjudications, you're going to reflect on those adjudications um, and kind of check that they were fair, check that you did make the right call, try and uh, think through your decision making process. Um, and, you know, if there are weaknesses there, keep them in mind for next time. All right, how are you practically going to combat unconscious bias? So firstly, during a debate, there are a number of things you can do both to make it less likely that you kind of do unconscious bias, but also to limit the effects of, of it if it does sneak in. So firstly, you're going to take really careful and detailed notes, and it's really important that those reflect as closely as possible what the speaker actually said. Uh, you shouldn't attempt to paraphrase them too much because this can be uh, a, a way that unconscious bias can enter your assessments of what they've said. So having a clear record of what speakers actually claimed, the arguments they actually make, will mean that you can look back on the debate with maximal clarity and maximal fairness. Secondly, like don't accept claims uncritically. You should really be asking yourself if each speaker has explained their arguments properly, because sometimes how unconscious bias manifests itself is some speakers get their claims uh, analyzed, some speakers get their claims scrutinized, but others are allowed a little bit more wiggle room, they're allowed just to make claims and the adjudicator implicitly believes them. So having a, a strict standard of 
not accepting claims uncritically of scrutinizing them to make sure they make logical sense will help to deal with that. Force yourself to be equal across the board. Thirdly, think critically about flowery language, rhetoric, speeches which sound good. A lot of the things we are taught to believe sound good uh, are necessarily a bit biased. So if you think that someone might be saying um or like uh, or they're not assertive enough or you know they're using two simple words uh too bad that actually doesn't say a lot about the quality of their argument and so you shouldn't just automatically be persuasive uh, be persuaded by uh, what someone sounds like fourthly you're going to pay attention to your thought process when you decide to believe an argument or characterization so just make sure that you're not uh you know kind of going well that seems intuitive that seems right i sort of recognize this this aligns with my experience make sure that you're believing it because it's something which teams have adequately explained they've adequately adequately backed up uh what are you going to do during adjudicate or during a deliberation well i think basically what you should be doing as you decide the result of the debate is looking out for any markers that might suggest that you have been biased so for example if you're finding that your feedback is really targeting the speaking style or the manner of well in this case the opposition but of, of either speech of, of either of either side speeches um that's a sign that you could have unconscious bias and that perhaps your assessments of the way the speakers spoke uh is entering too much into how you're adjudicating the debate secondly uh if you find yourself agreeing with a claim because it just seemed clearer or it just seemed more plausible or i just bought it uh, those are signs that you should go back over your notes and identify why you really believed it. Now, you might have believed it because it actually just was better explained, uh, but you should check that. You should not just, uh, just assume that it's something that was believable. Thirdly, when you're weighing one idea over another, make sure that you explain why you actually thought that idea was more important than the other. There's a tendency sometimes to just make the way up based on preconceived ideas and pushing yourself to really explain that will make you a better edge, but it will also mean that you avoid uh, just kind of making assumptions about the debate. So overall, what we're going to do to combat unconscious bias is we're going to clearly um, reflect upon the way that we adjudicate and the biases that we might bring to it. Uh, and then we're going to be very careful in the debate to subject our decision making process to some scrutiny to think through the decisions that we're making and make sure that we can actually explain them based on what happened in the debate and we're going to be making sure that we credit each uh, each speaker for their arguments fully and fairly.